everybody, welcome to Breads with Shuba, an alternate reality to Reads with Shuba, where once a month I share a sourdough recipe that I've been enjoying and making at home with you all. My first video that I ever did was for sourdough pretzel bites and they tasted delicious. I will link the video up top, but I wanted to backtrack a little bit and I decided that I would start from the beginning. As someone who learned how to make sourdough bread, it is very easy and it is doable. So I thought for today's video, I would teach you how to make your very own sourdough bread. And for my recipe, I will be making my favorite type of sourdough bread, which is everything but bagel sourdough bread. For this video, I'm gonna bring us back to the basics. I'm not going to be talking about sourdough theories. I'm not going to be mentioning any real technical terms. I'm just going to teach you how to make very simple, beginner-friendly sourdough bread. I hope you enjoyed this process and this video and if you do follow this process and follow along please let me know how your sourdough bread turns out at the bottom in the comment section below like and subscribe you'll get one video a week All right, the first thing that we're going to do for prepping our starter bread is we need to feed our starter. Now you can make your own starter or you can get your starter from a friend. They will happily share a starter with you, I'm sure. Here is my sourdough starter. I've had my starter for almost a year now and I only feed it when I'm going to make bread or anything sourdough related. So it's usually once a week because I make fresh sourdough bread every single week for this household. So we have our starter and then we will need 100 grams of just tap water is what I use. You can use filtered water, but I just use tap water here. And then we're going to need all purpose flour and I use the King Arthur all purpose flour. Here is 100 grams of all purpose flour. So it is a one to one ratio in terms of water and flour that you use. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our water and our all-purpose flour and feed the sourdough starter because that's how we're going to get the sourdough starter to feed and activate so we have our levain. That is as technical as I'm going to get here. <laughs> so as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm just going to pop my water, 100 grams in here, take a little spoon and I'm gonna take my flour Add it all. Now, all I'm doing is mixing everything together so my starter can blend in with the ingredients. We wanna mix this all together and make sure that it is consistent and there aren't very many clumps so that it can feed and grow evenly. So here's the consistency. It should be pretty kind of thick. As you can see, it's it's slow to drip, dribble. All right, so now I'm just gonna clean off the spoon. We have our fed sourdough starter. What we're going to do next is we need to let it sit so it can rise and it's going to double in size almost. Normally I'll just let it sit in, the, in like a dark corner area on the kitchen counter and I will take, I'll show you where that is. I'm gonna close this lid with my weck jar. I use my weck jar to grow my sourdough and normally I will use and keep it very airtight with those clips that the weck jar comes with. But since I do just want this to grow a little bit, I'm not going to keep it as tight knit. So we have our sourdough starter right here. For the purpose of this video, I will not be using my Sour House Goldie, which is this incubator container right here. I'm just going to let my starter sit in the corner just like this with a little bit of airtight, but not fully, just so it can grow and rise. But we're gonna leave this for a couple of hours and come back and see how far it has, how much and how far it's grown. I put a rubber band to where the starter is right now and we'll see how much it grows. It should double, so it should almost reach the top. I will see you in a couple of hours so we can check up on our starter. It should eat a little bit and it should grow in size. 
Hi everybody, I am back and now let's take a look at our Fed starter. So we started off right here and it definitely looks like the starter grew quite a bit. I'm not sure if you can see that, but we want to make sure that the starter is bubbly and there are bubbles in the starter, which is good. It's pretty thick in terms of consistency. And if we try to scoop it out, it has air bubbles and it's goopy. So that's how you know that your starter has been fed when it rises, almost doubles up, and it's pretty thick in consistency. So we have our starter. I'll have to measure that out, but we will need 120 grams of our sourdough starter, 16 grams of salt. I use kosher sea salt. You can use whatever salt you want. I don't really think it matters that much. Hasn't matter mattered to me thus far. We have our bowl of already measured out 500 grams of bread flour. I use King Arthur. And then we have 310 grams of warm water. I have temped it out to 90 to 95 degrees. I'm not pretty exact on my temperature measurements. This is just what works for me. Now we're going to add all of the ingredients up together. Now what I will do is I will just start with the spatula and mix everything together. You can already tell it is combining together into a loose ball. There's always flour that gets stuck on the bottom, so I'll try to make sure I get that mixed in as well. That looks really good. It is round, it's sticky, it's formed its shape. So now what we're going to do is saran wrap it and let it sit for an hour. And then we're going to start our rolls and foldings and add our seasoning. I have covered this up with saran wrap. And now what we're going to do is let this sit for an hour so that after the hour we can start our first roll and fold. We're going to roll and fold for the first time in an hour and then two to three times after that every 20 minutes. And then we'll add our seasonings and whatever we want for this sourdough. But for now, I'm going to leave it as is and I will see you back in an hour. Okay, so it's been an hour and I'm ready to fold and roll for the first time. I'm getting my hands wet and then all I'm going to do is lift and fold. Pull and fold. Pull and fold. Pull and fold. And every time I just turn my bowl around a little bit more. Once I'm done, I do it four times since there's like four sides of folding. Then I'll just roll my dough into a ball. Kind of getting that, starting to get that shape. 
And we're gonna do this two more times anyway, so your ball doesn't have to be perfect. But you can see that the bread looks a lot more formed than before. Now that we have pulled and folded once through, we're going to set a timer for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and do this again. And then I'll add my seasoning at this time. And then we'll wait another 20 minutes and fold and roll one more time. Normally they say three to four times and I just do three times, just can't be bothered, you know. So I'm going to put my saran wrap back over it and we're going to let it sit and I'll see you in 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes, now let's fold and roll one more time. And this time, if you're wanting to add any seasonings, feel free to. I am making everything but bagel seasoning. We don't have very much left, but it'll do. Don't forget to get your hands wet. Second roll is done. Something you'll notice when you're folding and rolling with each set, it should get a little bit more firm and put together. And that's a good thing. Comparing my first fold and roll to the second time, the shape is being formed and it's a lot more clean. We're gonna let this sit for another 20 minutes and do one more fold and roll and add the last bit of the seasonings. See you in 20. We are back after 20 minutes to fold and roll one more time and add our final seasonings. Let's do it. You know the drill. Okay, now this is a good pre-loaf. If I do say so myself. Okay, now for the next step, what we're going to do is put the saran wrap back on. If you have an oven that has a bread proofing setting, feel free to use that. If you don't, I would just leave it on the counter maybe with some warm light if you have that, but no problem if you don't. The recipe that I use says six to 12 hours. Now, all we really need to do is, it needs to be warm enough so your dough can bulk rise and it'll like double in size. So, you have your two options. I have an oven that has a proofing button, so I'm just going to pop it in the oven for the bread proofing setting and it's just gonna do the trick. And I'm going to let it proof for about, I'll see what it looks like at eight hours. And if we can, we'll bake it tonight. And if not, and it still needs to rise a little bit more and kind of take its shape, then we will bake it tomorrow morning. So whatever your option is, what you're gonna do is you can cover this up if you would like and let it sit for six to 12 hours. And we'll see how this looks like in a few hours. But it's, it's turning out really well. If you wanted to know what I meant by covering this up, all I did was took a towel and kind of placed it on top just so the heat can stay in the container. But yeah. I'm just gonna pop it in now. Hi everybody, so it's been a couple of hours and I checked on the dough and it has risen quite a lot. It's been about eight hours, so I don't think we can wait any longer or else it's going to explode a little bit. So we're just gonna have to bake this tonight. So what we're going to do is first take the wrapping off and toss it to the side. You're not gonna need it anymore. Grab a hand towel and what you're going to want to do is grab your dough 
in one hand and put the towel in the bowl and fill the bowl up with a little bit of flour. It can be bread flour. I use all-purpose flour just because we have a lot of that at home. And then you're going to place the dough back in. And I'll show you how to do this. My right hand is wet. What I'm going to do is try to grab it with my right hand. I know it kind of seems weird. Okay, now I'm going to place the hand towel there. Grab some flour and spread it on the towel. And then I'm just gently going to place the bread dough, sorry, on top of the towel. And then now what I'm going to do is kind of take the edges and fold them in. So I take one edge, fold it to the center. Just these small little pieces, I'm gonna fold it into the center like this. Kind of so there's like a knot in the center right here. Once I have my knot, I'm going to take some more flour and I'm just gonna just dump it basically all around. So I'm gonna fold this back up. We're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes and get ready to bake. Now that we have this prepped, what we're going to do is turn the oven on at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And while that is getting ready to heat up, this is going to sit like this for 30 minutes. I usually just wait until the timer goes off and the oven is heated, but you can just do 30 minutes if you like to stick with time frames. After 30 minutes is over, we're going to flip this into the cast iron Dutch oven. I have a cast iron Dutch oven. You can use whatever type of Dutch oven you want or have, and we're going to use that to bake it. So set your timer for 500 degrees right now, and we're going to wait for 30 minutes. It's been about 30 minutes. So what you're going to do is grab your parchment paper and your sourdough. Dough. Now what you're going to do is open this up, take your parchment paper, and cut off a piece, and you're going to flip the bread, the dough onto the parchment paper, so what I like to do is I'll place the parchment paper on top and I'll just flip it over and gently lift the hand towel off and it should come off pretty easily because remember we put a lot of flour on top so there you have it you have your dough and now it's ready to bake Grab your Dutch oven. Mine is hot because I left it in the oven to heat up. While the oven heats up, you can choose to leave it in the oven or not. It is up to you. That is just what I follow. So now what you're gonna do is grab your dough with the parchment paper. Just kind of plop it in gently. This is what it will look like. Now we're going to want to score the top of the dough. I just use a knife for this. The reason why we want to score the dough is so that when the the bread, when the dough it bakes, when the bread bakes, it can crack and open naturally and you have like nice texture. At least that's why I think that's why we do it. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that really quickly. What I just do is I just make a, a line, keep it simple. I'm not really into designs yet, don't really know how. Here is my scoring. Now we're ready to just put the lid on and pop it in the oven. What we're going to do next is 
bake this with the lid on in the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 to 20 minutes. I normally do 18 minutes just so I don't burn the dough and bread. And then what we're gonna do after 18 minutes is we're going to bake it for 18 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll drop the temp down and just bake it again for 18 minutes. Cool? Let's start with the 500 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 minutes. All right, it's been 18 minutes. Now let's take the Dutch oven out and pop the lid off and see how the bread looks before we put it back in. Look at that beauty. Now we're gonna put it back in the oven with the lid off. Turn it down to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And once that's ready, another 18 minutes. Second round of 18 minutes of baking is over and now let's check on the bread. This looks really good. Look at it. <gasps> See, wasn't that easy? you know how to make sourdough bread. Please like this video and comment down below if you've tried this recipe and if you have any questions, I would be happy to help you with your sourdough starter and sourdough bread, whatever it may be. If I know the answer to it, I'll help you out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.